I don't know about you guys, but I've always had a soft spot for Samsung's S series active models until they decided to kill it off with the S8 active. That was a really sad day when that happened. But what these are, in case you didn't know what they're all about, is they're basically toughened and more durable versions of the standard phones that we already own. But they're made to excel and survive in the toughest conditions imaginable, like on mountaintops or rock faces or underwater or even a 2700 mile PCT hike, as well as probably the most demanding place of them all the urban jungle, where the most careless and buttered fingered users like you and I exist. Yes. And so we come to this, guys. Today, we're going to be looking at the Kyocera Dual Sport 5G UW, a hooked up phone made to survive a nuclear blast or a children's birthday party, all without the bulk and ugliness and some unique outdoorsy features thrown in just for good measure. So let's find out if the Dual Sport is the legit successor to the Samsung Active. Let's do it after these messages. And don't forget to subscribe and like if you like where this video is going that way. <laughs> Let's dig into the specs real quick. The Android Enterprise Certified Dura Sport runs $580 on Amazon and the Verizon store. And it rocks a 6.1 inch 2400 by 1080p 60 hertz LCD display with 500 nits and also has 441 PPI density protected by Gorilla Glass 6. Powering the show in the background is a low-end Snapdragon 480 with 5G with 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of storage. And that's also expandable to one terabyte with a micro SD. There's a 4,500 milliamp hour battery in here with 27 watt quick charge ability as well as wireless charging at the back. And I was able to eke out around two and a quarter days, pretty darn amazing of battery life with mostly regular use like email, taking photos and videos for this review, editing on G photos, uh, listening to music on Tidal connected to my Bluetooth device browsing in about two hours total of light gaming over a mix of like 80% Wi-Fi, 10% 4G and 10% 5G. Now, when I played a video on a loop from 100% charge over Wi-Fi at maximum volume, maximum brightness, I got about 10 and a half hours with 5% to spare of screen on time. The weight is a light 184 grams and the phone has IP68 water dust sand resistance and also has a mil durability rating of A10H. That means it will survive without the leak from a fall of five feet, supposedly. The front camera is a standard fair eight megapixel unit with 85 degrees field of view. And the rear camera consists of a 48 megapixel F1.8 sensor at the top, followed by a 60 megapixel 117 degree wide angle F2.2 piece. Now, the Dual Sport also is N Plus compatible, which means you can pair, say, any N Plus fitness equipment with the phone and use it with the camera apps action cam overlay or any supported fitness apps. And another thing you don't see often is this phone has a two-year warranty. Aside from the Gorilla Glass on the front and the aluminum chassis, the build, as you can see, is predominantly plastic with dimples on the side right here like a golf ball and slightly rougher texture on the back for added grip. Now, the dimensions are compact and relatively rare and refreshing for an Android phone in 2022, especially one with 5G and with bumpers built into the corners for drops and such, something built tough like this, that's rare. And if you like to use your phone one-handed where your thumb can still reach both ends, this be it guys. Now the bezels are pretty prominent, seven millimeters at the bottom, five at the top, three in each corner. You can also see a teardrop camera cut out. Plus there's a slight lip. I'm not sure you can see that one around the screen for protection when you lay it on a flat surface. Um, there's a single speaker at the top right here. There's no stereo effect at the bottom. Uh, fingerprint sensor is pretty darn fast at the back. The camera hump uh, is barely one millimeter tall. So the phone stays relatively stable on a flat surface. There's a slight wobble though. Uh, on the left side of the device, this is one of my favorite features here. We have a large function button that is programmable to like do launch or activate pretty much anything on the phone. Now, right here is this water seal flap, one of the easiest to remove ever. It just pulled the flap out and there's a nano SIM card as well as micro SD slot right in there. Uh, at the bottom, we have a USB-C slot flanked by two microphones. And on the right side, we have the volume toggle switch as well as the power button. The Dual Sport runs a mostly vanilla version of Android 11. If you're familiar with that version, everything is pretty much where they should be. There is a lot of pre-installed apps though. Uh, the settings are pretty much the same too, except for some icon changes. And also of course, some additions like that specific to Kyocera, like the programmable key and other features like gestures and things like that. Uh, and at the home screen, more prominently is when you swipe right, Kyocera built in this thing called the Outdoor Portal. This is meant for outdoor enthusiasts specifically. And here you can access things like detailed temperature maps, your compass, your tides, 
your uh, sunrise sunset and even if you're a wildlife photographer there's a solar schedule everything is accessible from a swipe and i really like that or you can just key it to the programmable button um, the other thing too is the camera and this is one of the things that Coursera also uh, touts about let me see if you'll pull up this is the action overlay it's an additional feature to the camera where you can mount this on your bike or your car or something and this can act like an action cam and have all the information like your g-forces your speed and things like that and then you can show the map later on while you're recording so it, some people like this kind of stuff and at least it's available here and don't forget to subscribe and share if you like where this video is going that way Compact phones are my jam, guys, and I'm sure it's for many of you too. And I think we all should sign a petition to bring smaller phones back into our ready overstuffed pant pockets, dang it. And the Kyocera gets extra points here because it's a Tough mutter of a device the size of a Pixel 5a. Think about that for a second. Now, the fact that I can manhandle this thing or be a complete klutz, oops, or expose it to some pretty extreme conditions, or all the above if you must, means that I can focus on what I'm doing at the moment rather than worry about my phone all the time. Well, just don't drop it in the middle of a lake or an ocean while you're trying to film yourself boating or something. You're on your own there. <gasps> oh! I'm not sure what brand Coursera went with the LCD, but I'll tell you what, it looks pretty darn great. It has punchy colors, great resolution with crisp, clear text. It's really such a joy to use, even in bright daylight. I thought at first it was OLED when I first turned it on, but it's not. It's LCD, it's pretty darn awesome. And this is one of few screens out there that you can use also with relatively thick gloves. And PSA, I found the most success if you use fabric ones. Let's get this straight. The camera isn't going to worry major players, but it is a solid shooter, especially if you take it into good light with enough resolution and information from that 50 megapixel lens if you want to, to edit in Lightroom or Snapseed and or to make large prints. It's perfectly fine for casual photographers. It's just not for image connoisseurs. 
Now, a word about the camera app. The breadth of additional features and functions beyond your usual pro or slow-mo or beauty modes is actually quite impressive here. Uh, of course, some are more useful than others. One of my favorites is like the underwater mode where you'll turn off the screen and you have to rely on the heart buttons uh, to control video and photo capture. It's pretty cool. Or the multi-camera mode, which is perfect for when you want to blog or vlog your experience with both cameras on at the same time. This is my backyard, guys, the Penobscot River. Uh, it's a tidal river. Uh, it refreezes and freezes again as the water level goes down and up, uh, depending on the time of day, of course. Uh, but it produces some really cool ice effects everywhere. Um, and as you can see from the pictures here, the front camera that's facing me, it's a little bit on the bright side, overexposed. But on the rear camera, uh, blue is pushed a little bit. It's not very realistic. Uh, the actual sky right now is lighter blue and the white balance is a little bit lower as well. But uh, in terms of um, uh, color accuracy, it seems like the white of the ice matches better than what's on the pixel. Okay, on the flip side, the camera doesn't do too hot in low light or darker areas, and that I'm not surprised by. The dynamic range kind of struggles here, and noise is quite apparent, as you can see from these samples when you zoom in. The included night mode, well, I think that's just a name. It doesn't do too much and it isn't too helpful in dark situations or night situations, but it does pull in a little bit more detail in a low light scene. So I suggest using this mode for those kind of situations. Why a more capable Snapdragon 700 or even a 600 chipset plus more RAM weren't used on a $600 device is beyond me guys, because as it is, they are performance starters, especially when you multitask between memory heavy apps, like switching between a medium sized game to photo editing or something, you'll see it slow down. Another visible place where it bogs down is the camera app. It takes a tick longer than I would like when you cold launch it or when you switch between modes. I wish it was a little bit smoother there. I don't like pre-installed third-party apps. Most of us don't like pre-installed third-party apps. In conclusion, pre-installed third-party apps need to die. That's it, end of story. And thank goodness you can uninstall them here but they shouldn't have been installed in the first place. And finally, we come to the elephant in a room, which is the asking price. Oh my goodness, $580 is a lot to ask for a brand that honestly, most people probably associate more with photocopiers rather than phones, right? And the fact that the 5G Pixel 5a also exists and that costs $130 less and the Apple SE 5G for about $400 only. And sure, Kyocera can reason that you're buying an enterprise-grade phone built in Japan, which some of you may consider a good thing compared to the Made in China stuff, and also a two-year warranty. And of course, neither the Pixel or Apple are built like a tank. I personally still think it could use a price drop though. The Duo Sport is a mixed bag because on one hand, it satisfies anyone looking for a tough, heavy duty device without the added bulk or size that these kind of phones usually bring and that you don't need to buy a super thick case for. The screen is fantastic. The side key is super useful. The performance, decent. The battery life is a beast, yo. And it has some software features that can be either useful or fun or both. Still, on the other hand, I wish this had more power, a more refined camera package, and maybe the power button could be a little bit higher up the side right here. And the price, yes, the price, that's a hard one for me because if this was like $350 or even $400, I wouldn't mind recommending it. Now, I will add that every time I pick this unit up though, I can't seem to stop geeking out because there's just something about the size, the whole user interface, the buttons, the extra features all coming together. And the fact that this is a fuss-free, built for tough kind of phone, I really like it a lot. And as a side note, I'm actually gonna be giving this to my wife to use as her daily and the, she drops her phones a lot and she prefers something for her smaller hands. I bet you know someone in your life just like that. And so maybe this is who this phone is really built for. So anyways, with all that said, I'm gonna be giving the Kyocera Durasport 5G UW a gear up score of 7.6 out of 10. And this is how I broke it down to get the final score. If you have any questions about it, feel free to comment down below. Well, I'm checking out for the day, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I love y'all very much. And remember to subscribe to this channel. I'm trying to get to 50,000 subs. So share this with your friends and family as well and ask them to do the same. If you like to, visit my Patreon page down here where like Super Yen and Barbecue Jones, because of their help, they financially helped me to get you videos like this to watch. So yeah, remember to thumbs up if you like this video and comment nicely down below as well. Super important stuff. And remember to do something kind and loving for somebody in this world this week, because guess what? The world needs it more than ever, and it starts with you.
I love you all very much. Peace out. Whew.